Hello, and thank you so much for joining again. This channel is dedicated to coaches and counselors to help grow, develop, start your private practice, as well as help you market your private practice. So if you have any questions, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I will put my email address below, but it is info at gemtherapy.co.za. I am a coach and as well as a counselor. And this channel is meant to reach out to other counselors and coaches that can help us with new tools, techniques, methods, as well as reaching out to other service providers that can make the life of coaches and counselors much easier. We've spoken to Nicole before from BizLife, um, who deals a lot with the administrative and the business side of things. We don't always know how to work around figures and how to work with numbers. And that's where they come in. They deal with the medical aid claims. They deal with the administration. They give you feedback. But today is going to be completely different. Today, we're going to speak to Kim Clark. She works with essential oils. And I thought you might benefit from it as well. Um, essential oils is wonderful. It's first of all, it's natural. Uh, so a client don't, don't always have to take a tablet or drink a little syrup or something. They can use essential oils, especially with the calming and soothing and stress um, factors. So we're going to talk to her and find out how we can bring essential oils into our private practices and how we can give that information over to our clients. Um, a lot of clients that I came across uh, with are a little bit scary and weary about using tablets. They don't want to drink a sleeping tablet. They don't want to go on to anxiety or depression medication. This is something that uh, essential oils is something that can bridge that gap. If they don't want to take it, we, who are we to force them? Um, uh, obviously with certain matters, medic, uh, uh, medication is the best route, but if it's not necessary, we can definitely use essential oils. But before we go further, I hope you got your book. Your journey begins now. Start and market your own successful coaching or counseling private practice in South Africa. It is filled with information. There's so many examples, tools, exercises, masters in here that can only benefit you. It is available on Take A Lot as well as on Amazon. Take A Lot is the paperback. Amazon is paperback and as well as the ebook. Um, uh, according, well, my preference is actually take a lot. Uh, it's so much easier because it's local and it's pre being printed locally. Um, but please go and get your copy. I will put the links in the description below. Otherwise, what I would like you to do is if you are a service provider, please reach out to me. If you're a coach, please reach out to me. We'd love to share your information and your, uh, your details with other coaches and counselors. And um, yes, I hope you enjoy the session that we're going to have with Kim today. Okay, everybody, I would love to introduce you to Kim Clark. She is the essential oil guru in my mind. She knows, and I know from previous conversations that I had with you, Kim, you have opened up my mind and my eyes to essential oils and actually incorporating that in into not only into my own life, but into the lives of my clients. Um, but, but tell me a little bit more about your business. What do you do? What does it entail? I discovered doTERRA just through um, researching my own personal wellness needs and um, came across uh, essential oils before doTERRA actually launched in South Africa. And um, I have had a very long wellness journey um, and was seeking natural solutions and 
reached out, tried them, and they really produce such amazing benefits um, without sort of the, the guilt aspects that go along with uh, having to take pharmaceuticals and that sort of thing when, um, you know, when I really had to take for chronic illness, so I, I um, had two autoimmune conditions um, that I was taking medication for every day. And then there's all those side effects, you know, that start to evolve when you're managing different symptoms and things. So then you're needing to take take other over-the-counter meds, etc. So for me, there was always a lot of um, guilt associated um, and concern with putting additional toxins in my body when I was trying to detox. So that just led me to exploring. And I came across doTERRA um, through somebody in the UK and thought, well, this looks lovely. And the more I discovered uh, about the brand and the heritage and the ethos behind it, um, I fell in love with it. It was like a match made in heaven that I could take something that I'm very passionate about and experience the benefits for and really just go out there and share um, with others on their healing journey. You know, we have physical symptoms, we have emotional symptoms. And really what I loved about the opportunity of making a business out of this was that um, I knew these oils could help people. I knew that I had something that besides an amazing company background, uh, you know, global business that I could do online from home, there were all these little tick points along the way. Um, you know, that this was something that could really make a difference in the lives of others. And I'd been exploring things like that. Um, I had to stop work um, because of my, my illness that I had. I was in marketing and I loved my work. I was in pharmaceuticals and healthcare and personal care industries. And um, I'd stopped work for a while to really just focus on my own healing and a lot of um, OT and whatnot. So. I was ready to also take on something new. You know, they say often um, the healed becomes a healer. And, uh, you know, once you've been through a journey, you're empowered then to, to go and uh, help others. And that's really, um, that's how I got into Natera as a business. I tried it. It worked for me in so many amazing ways, um, both emotionally and then with my physical symptoms. Uh, that it was kind of uh, just a very natural transition to go in because when something when something works for you, you want to share it with the world, and then when you do that, it's it's done with conviction. And I always believe in this energy of of business and interaction with people when it's done really with the heart, mm. that it it resonates. Um, and, and it, it takes away the sales aspect because I always thought, oh, this is a selling business, but it's not. It's an energy business and it's about um, really reaching out with solutions to, to help others. Now, do you see clients as well? And um, what techniques do you use to introduce them to essential oils or to find the right essential oils for them? Generally, what I do is I like to just invite people onto a general um, overview class. It's a one hour class and we run through really what essentials are, why they work. Uh, you know, I come from a background, my father um, is a medical doctor, but we had a lot of holistic aspects and alternative health, you know, remedies and things growing up. So natural solutions were, were something that um, I was always open to and grew up with, but I had no idea that essential oils could be as powerful as they were. But it, it took me into my 40s to discover that. Mm -hmm. um, so what we do is we really just give a broad brushstroke of what they are and an indication of why, why they work and why our doTERRA ones are so potent. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there, there are many essential oils out there and it's a, quite a gray industry in the sense that, um, you know, do you know what you're getting? Do you know what you're buying? And if you look at the range of prices and things out there, uh, something should ring bells. If you look at one price, uh, very reasonable, and then there's a, a much higher price one, you ask, well, what am I getting? 
mm. for these two different products. So we explain a little bit about that um, and the sourcing aspects that makes doTERRA so unique because um, and that, that's something that, that I loved is that um, they don't go and buy thousands of hectares and go farm. Mm. The Terra don't farm. They actually go and source these oils from the regions where that plant, that raw material is in its natural habitat. Because when you think of a happy plant, a happy plant is going to produce the most perfect oil of what it was created for, right? Mm. Um, if it's in a different environment to its indigenous habitat, it's going to have stress factors and that impacts on the purity of the oil um, and therefore on its potency for us. Mm. So um, what they do is they actually go into these remote regions. A lot of these essential oils are sourced um, in third world countries. So this has been a huge thing for me to watch um, in the four years I've been involved with Doterra is the way they go out and they work in these with these micro farmers, some of them have got sort of generational farmers that go out, you know, in Oman and Somalia with frankincense. Mm. These guys go into the desert um, to these trees that produce a certain amount of resin a year. If they're overstripped, mm. that tree will not produce anymore. Yeah. And we lose that resource as humanity. I mean, frankincense is one of the most powerful multi-beneficial oils and um, often what was happening in the industry was these guys were getting absolutely ripped off by that middleman in the, in the not essential oil industry necessarily but the fragrance industry and whatnot mm -hmm. so what doTERRA does is it goes and it co-works with these small communities uplifts them and and the work that they do so they're empowering people individually providing micro loans um, Another great story is in Bulgaria many years ago. Most of our lavender used to come from there. Across the world um, harvest was um, based in Bulgaria, but a lot of those farmers got ripped off and the whole industry fell away and then got sort of revived through France. Um, but what doTERRA had done, because the quality of the lavender is so amazing there and their soils and everything is so right, they've gone back there and we established these farmers and the communities and everything. And that whole industry is just enlivened up again. They've just put a $3 million distillery in there so that they don't have to transport the oils around and they are doing other oils as well. So it's just got a good story behind it in terms of where these oils come from. You know, there's no one being ripped off. You know, you're doing, giving a little bit towards you part of this bigger picture that is not just about you taking an oil for your wellness um it goes right back to the very origins of the oil so it's a it's a nice feel good brand it does it does feel good and um, i like what you said earlier on is there's so many products on uh, on the shelves and you google it and like 10 different brands come up and you don't know which one to choose and most often the cheaper one is diluted either with oils or with water or whatever else stuff they diluted it is not your pure essential oil and if you do use those diluted um, oils you won't get the benefits that you were hurt and then the essential oils will get a bad name because you say oh no i tried it but it didn't work for me but in the meantime you actually used a diluted oil that didn't. So true. And that's also a thing, you know, this whole adulteration of the oils in the marketplace and um, labeling laws and even the misconceptions of us as consumers. Um, people say, well, is doTERRA organic? Mm. So the, the preconceived idea is that organic means pure. Organic does not mean pure. Mm. So that's why doTERRA is all organic because we can prove its purity, but we mm. have got a certain standard that they were actually hoping the whole industry would join on to so that there would be something that we could grade the oils on and compare mm. nobody else has done it because it's a whole lot harder and a whole lot more expensive um to test these oils so ours go an oil can be contaminated when it is harvested it could have been exposed to chemicals um 
that even the farm is not aware of mm. during during the um the growing of that plant during transportation they might get funny nunu in the sack or you know we just don't know all the the drums when they're distilling could be contaminated so there are many opportunities for toxins uh, and all sorts just through the distillation process to happen mm. and then of course once it gets to that middle man and he's wanting to make money out of this, he doesn't really care if he's going to go and say something's pure lavender oil and put a whole lot of chemicals in to make it smell like lavender, but it's not. So it is a very, um, a very gray industry. And that's why we're so dedicated in the education aspect of it is because people, if people understand you're wanting to embark upon this journey of natural solutions and wellness, you're not going to want to put toxins on your body or in your body. Uh, we're trying to get them out and the essential oils are meant to be helping uh, with that whole thing. But if you're going to put, um, your, and some of the, the things that are being put in the fillers and synthetics are, are real nasties. So, and we know there's scientific studies now that have proven independent of doTERRA. So it's an industry thing that have proven that the purer the oil is, the more potent the benefits will be. So, um, and, and we can prove it now. So you could say to any essential oil manufacturer, is your oil pure? Oh, yes, they'll say. And they might say it with conviction, thinking it's mm. pure. And that's that's great. Mm. But can they prove it? No, because they haven't done the tests. And we prove it. And that's why we have a grade called Certified Pure Tested Grade, um, which you can go onto a website. And at the bottom of every little oil is a number. There's a whole website dedicated to our sourcing and the purity, and you can track all the tests, 54 tests per bottle that wow. prove purity. So what I loved about this was when people came to me and they said, is this safe for my baby? Mm. That, that's quite a responsibility as, as a supplier, you know, as, as somebody, is this safe for my baby? Is this safe for my child? Is, is it safe for my, my pet even, right? And um, we can say with conviction, yes, it is. I can say from my heart, yes, it is, because I know I can prove its purity. So that's what really makes um, that, I think the brand so successful is the belief and the trust that everybody has in it. Yeah, well, that actually brings me to my next question that I wanted to ask you is, which ages can use essential oils? From the cradle to the grave. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. any, any age group. Um, we have newborns that uh, can, can be assisted with essential oil blends that somebody in every decade of their life age can, can be using. The, the application differs slightly. So we teach about the babies. We've actually got a class about babies and oils. Um, and we've got one about pregnancy because, of course, you've got to be a little bit more careful during your different trimesters. So we monitor that. Um, but with babies, you would generally, obviously, they're, they're smaller beings. They're more sensitive to things like smell and and um, their skins are more sensitive. Yeah. So then we dilute them hugely. I mean, as it is, it's... it's for us as adults, a dosage is really two drops. So for the children, we generally use it um, on the skin topically, and we dilute it with carrier oil significantly. And then for your other age groups, you know, your under tens, then other dilutions. So that is very much um, an aspect of, of the safety of the oils and um, the methodology on how we use them for different purposes, because one oil can be used for so many different benefits across different ways of, of yeah. using it as well. Okay, now uh, you've uh, been talking about these uh, uh, classes that you do. Uh, are these a uh, training for clients as well as for, uh, can you, do you have a class that counselors or coaches can uh, join and actually make this part of their product? Or product Absolutely, or we do. What I like to do is if they are not too familiar with doTERRA or essential oils yet, come on to a one-on-one -on -one 
I do a business class as well where I explain how they can incorporate this and how the business model actually works because there are five different income channels in it. Mm. From there, um, what I like to do, and this brings my sort of marketing background and one of my passions about doing this as a business and walking it with other people is um, I love to get people's own uh, essence really into the business so we talk about what they do what they love doing and um, we mold everything into their own uh, unique way of doing this so we've got an amazing I always say that here is like a little black dress everybody needs one it's the, everybody needs it and it's the perfect the perfect fit mm. And how you adorn it, whether you wear it with tackies or high heels or, or do your hair up or down, um, that's all your individual approach. And then uh, what I also love to do is find what people love doing the most, because if you're doing what you love doing the most, that then blooms into, into something greater. So, yeah, it's very much a, a transformational thing. So we go along and I also do um, wellness consultations. So for people who might not necessarily be seeing a counselor, um, they might be going through some kind of um, loss, grief, uh, that sort of thing. Mm. You can do a course. Um, there's an amazing lady in the UK called Rachel. I did um, the worm therapy. Um, what is her course called? The worm? Emotional aromatherapy yeah. certification, mm. right? And it's through the Cambridge Holistic Health um, site. If anybody is interested, I can give um, details about that and anybody through me would uh, get a, a discount. But she's an amazing lady and she teaches a methodology, which I think practitioners would be very interested in around the oils and their, their energies and their different benefits. So what doTERRA has got um, are specific blends for the different emotions, right? Because we know how very powerful they are when working on the olfactory system and into the brain. They work on the limbic part of the brain. Mm. So there we were able to just do amazing things through the simple, simple aspect of, of smelling and aroma. Um, so what's lovely about her methodology that she teaches is she takes it um, oil by oil on, on the emotional scales and then she breaks it down as to what what oils are in that blend mm -hmm. in the most amazing detail so that um, one can really assess straight off when somebody is ticking certain little boxes mm -hmm. of how they're feeling, we know which oil they need um, at that particular moment. And then we assist them with that. And then generally it works on an amazing cycle of um, starting with the oil called Forgive because we know we need to kind of get those emotions a little bit loosed up and up. And then we start through this whole methodology. But every week or two weeks, we meet with the client, um, identify where they're, where they're at in terms of feeling. Uh, but they also use a lot of other little guidelines, really, to, to make sure we are going into the right solutions for them where we incorporate a little bit of that a Chinese medicine wheel. Um, we look at the tongue, the health of the tongue. We look at marks on the face because marks in different areas of the face will also determine um, where there's uh, trauma and problems in the body. And then we also um, look at the sleep cycle, that circadian clock as to when people are waking up. So all of those things tie together and I've actually done a lovely little checklist that adds up and it all just sort of consolidates into, okay, this is where that, you know, this person is at. So that's lovely and I do that, but not as much as I used to because I'm more involved in the business aspect of everything now and coaching others um, on the business. But it, it's ever useful. I mean, um, especially with teenage, nieces and uh, all of that at the moment that the girls seem to be giving the moms lots of problems in the moment certainly with my community so there's lots of work around the girls yes yes so definitely 
Now, uh, can you give us, um, uh, you mentioned earlier on uh, carrier oils. Um, I know of a few. Uh, I know there's castor oil, there's um, sweet almond oil, there's coconut oil, jojoba oil. So there's uh, quite a few oils that you can dilute, um, but they don't always, you don't always have to dilute essential oils. Can you use it as is? Depending on, on the oil, something like lavender, for instance, is fabulous straight okay. onto the skin. All right. It's a gentle oil. And because it has got such calming benefits, it's not going to cause any irritation. So, um, and depending what you're using it for, the reason we use, we use coconut oil and it's a fractionated coconut oil that doesn't solidify. We don't have too much of a problem with that in South Africa, but in your colder countries, uh, and you're trying to count drops when it's solidified can get a bit frustrating. So what happens is this just comes in a bottle and you can count the drops that you need for your dilution. Um, but, you know, the, the reason we use it is because it applies onto the skin across a broader area, um, which means it's going to get into the skin faster. And it minimizes the evaporation of the oil. So what that means is you just, these are volatile aromatic compounds. They evaporate so fast. Mm. So you need to make sure they're getting onto the skin and it just avoids waste. So fractionated coconut oil is generally what I use. If um, I had a choice, it also depends what you're using it for. For the skin, jojoba oil is beautiful for a nourishing aspect, but it's not necessarily going to work on somebody who has got a very oily skin. Mm. Sweet almond oil is a beautiful one and very gentle. So um, it depends on your personal preferences. You know, uh, coconut oil, um, olive oil is a great one as well. And uh, what we do with our olive oil is um, if I'm using certain essential oils can be used internally and this is a doTERRA thing because they're pure so i don't recommend you go and throw any um other essential oils into your water or or take them internally unless you know they're pure but with doTERRA certain of them and it makes sense like a lemon oil okay because we know we can eat lemon mm. the oil comes from the round of the lemon and um we can put it in our water and get beautiful detox benefits from it. It actually de uh, flushes our toxins from the liver. Mm. We can get um, so much out of taking these internally, but sometimes they don't taste so great. Mm. So what we do, what we, we talk about is like oregano, and I, we were having a laugh earlier on before we went live about uh, the fact that oregano is a hot oil. Mm. And it has the most amazing antiviral properties. You also, when lockdown started, there were all these studies that came out about oregano oil. Oregano oil, it's so amazing for antiviral. Well, we knew that long ago, and we've been, we've been lobbing it down our system so well because it is phenomenal. But it is a hot, hot oil. It's warming um, and chili-like. So that's not great to put into any water or to put on your tongue. So what we do is we put them into veggie capsules. And then you can top them up with olive oil or just swallow them. They go down into the digestive area. And our tummies are very equipped then to absorb that oil without any issues. And then it gets distributed out into the bloodstream um, and it goes to where it needs to go and work. Okay, wonderful. And that's where you'll give the guidance on which uh, essential oils can be taken pure and which ones needs to be diluted and which ones can be taken uh, orally and which yes. one needs to be, you know, it's only on the skin because um, I know skin-wise, skin it's, I think it's your temples and it's here, your third eye. And yes. um, was it uh, the crown of your head and behind your, is it behind your ears or is it behind your neck? So behind your neck, that little hole at the base of your skull, yeah. right? that area, and they call the occipital zone. And it's a lovely place to put essential oils because it can go into the blood stream that goes up and down the spine. Mm. So it gets distributed very nicely and absorbed quickly. 
We know essential oils can pass through the blood-brain barrier. It's such a unique uh, property to have for a molecule. Our bodies have been created so magnificently not to allow um, funny things yeah. into the blood that goes into our brains. And I, I was saying to someone yesterday, it, it's like Mother Nature saying to us, here you go, because every essential oil can go through the blood brain barrier. Yes. It's such a unique thing, but then all of them work in that way. Some of them don't actively work in the brain to produce a benefit, but they all go through. Okay. And uh, something like frankincense, for instance, is an amazing one to take for brain related things. And um, yeah, it's a, a, a lovely concept um, to, to think that, it, that they are, they've kind of had that tick box from Mother Nature and from our bodies to say, these are okay. Yeah, I absolutely love frankincense. I think that's one of the most um, usable essential oils or more broad essential oils that can be used for so many different uh, ways. Um, I mean, I know that it's good for your skin, uh, yes. but it's, it's also good for your emotions. It is one of the most, I always say, if I could make sure every woman in the world had one essential oil, I'd give them frankincense. Mm. Because, you know, it's been used through meditational practice for centuries. Um, and, you know, through religious practice, uh, you know, I remember thinking as a, as a little girl, why did they give the baby Jesus frankincense and myrrh and in gold? Why didn't they give him diamonds and silver and gold or something like that? You know, the, the brain works. Now I see um, that myrrh and frankincense were equated with gold um, in their properties and their value. And, um, you know, you just look, it is fundamental for emotional equilibrium. It's great for all things brain related. Um, it's a restorative oil from a free radical scavenger side, a cellular renewal. So that's why it's great for anti-aging on the skin for your wrinkles, blemishes, that sort of thing. I'm and then, um, <laughs> yes, no, it really, it, it, I actually had a friend oh, I've sent to guys, but I've got. <laughs> It is the most amazing anti-aging. Yeah. And then also for the hormones, um, mm. a great one. And, you know, as women, right from puberty, we are experiencing these, the seesaw yeah. of that hormones. And then later, in later years, those extreme ups and downs of our hormones is what then proliferates into problems of tumors and that sort of thing. So frankincense is a great one to create um, a hormonal equilibrium. So for people going through pre, post, perimenopause, all of that, I always recommend um, the frankincense. But it's great for sleep. It's great for soothing properties, you know, that comfort, a feel good. Um, it is that all rounder gift that I would choose to give give every woman in particular, because I think it's it's so fitting that we have that um, that support in our lives. No, absolutely. Um, uh, just to move on, um, there are some, uh, uh, we actually talked about it earlier on that uh, you can't just use essential oils. There are warning signs or there are warning labels on it. You can't just use it because of underlying illnesses. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes. Yeah, so, you know, um, there's lots of regulations and we don't, we don't profess to be um, doctors or anything like that. We don't diagnose, treat or cure or claim any disease. And we don't really talk disease names per se, because um, things like the FDA can, um, you know, it's not allowed. Mm. So what, what really is important is that if you're looking to bring essential oils into your life to support you in different areas, is that um, 
you know, you've got to do it sensibly and wisely and, and not think, well, you know, if you, um, maybe on um, something to support your emotions, you don't want to just stop that and then start on essential oils. Everything in moderation and to keep a balance is the most important thing. If, if it starts to, to work for you, um, that you're feeling that you can tr start to transition, but it all needs to be done um, with guidance. Ooh. What's lovely though, is that doTERRA have got uh, so many tools and resources to help with the education around this and help people in understanding the best way to use essential oils for their particular issues. Mm -hmm. So while um, I might use lavender oil behind the ear, um, if my kiddies come niggling with saying their, their ears are, are giving them hassles, um, you know, that you can also use it if you are ironing and suddenly, you know, scold your hand. Um, there, there are different ways that one would use the oil. And there is so much information about that and a huge um, opportunity for support. Mm -hmm. And then your, your bottles actually come with a label. They either say A, T or R, often all three, aromatic, um, topical and internal. So you'll know from a bottle straight away uh, whether it is useful across all three of those uses or whether it's in particular um, something you would use topically. Like we've got one that we use a lot for um, muscle and joint related discomfort. Uh, that is something that we just apply onto that area. So if you're running and you give your foot a little side swipe and a sore and your ankle sore, um, you would then apply it to that particular area. Okay. Whereas, um, you know, somebody who's battling with, with discomfort in the head area, you're going to apply it then to the temples or to the back of the neck. Yes. But yes. that all it almost kind of becomes natural, but we've also got apps that people can download so that any time they've almost got an encyclopedia on their phone Beautiful. that they can look up, put a little search on. So if they're battling with a, a symptom, they can input the symptom. It'll come up with solutions of not just one essential oil, but a number. So you might not have a particular oil in your stash at that time, but there are a couple of options. Um, and then we'll also explain how you need to use it for that particular issue. So that's nice as well. And then we do lots of um, classes, uh, educational classes every second Wednesday night online where all of our um, customers are welcome to hop on and then we do topics. So we'll talk about stress and uh, the emotions or we'll talk about sleep. Um, another one is, is pain and discomfort. We'll talk about oils for kids, um, focus. So there are lots of areas that then if that is your particular need at that Point, you can hop onto the class and learn a little bit more about the applications associated with that particular need. Yes, yes. And I think people mustn't be like me. I'm a little bit, you know, if if I'm if I bake a cake, I will put in a little bit extra just for love. You can't do that with essential oils, you know. You don't need to. <laughs> you don't need to because it's strong enough and the recipe that that you supply is really that needs to be followed um, you can't put if the recipe only asks for two drops don't put four drops in and expect it to work faster you can actually cause damage that way that's it and you don't want to be putting four drops because you want your oils to last the very longest and that's also where a lot of the education comes in is that we want people to get the most out of their oils um, so when you are purchasing a bottle that it goes the furthest and does the most work for you. Mm -hmm. And yes, these are so potent. You know, one drop of peppermint oil is equivalent to 28 cups of peppermint tea. My word, okay. Right. Huge. And then when we're, talking, when we're talking about oregano, you know, the, um, the herb that we use in our pasta sauces or our pizza bases and that mm -hmm. sort of thing, um, the dried herb, so the oil is 57 times stronger than the dried herb version. 
Oh, so okay. if you're going to be cooking with the oils, which a lot of us do, you know, we've got things like lemongrass and mm -hmm. uh, rosemary and all of that. And I've actually recently just done a beautiful workshop about bringing flavor to food using essential oils, certain of them, obviously. Yes. Um, but with oregano, we, we recommend if you're going to flavor a sauce, just dip a toothpick into the oil and then stir it into your sauce. That's enough. So they are, they're very potent. You know, in my mind, I would think, okay, no, that's not enough. You just go and love it. Yeah, you know, and I've got to ruin, ruin the dish because I won't be able that's to it. eat it. <laughs> it is definitely the concept of less is more. Yes. Um, now, how can counselors and coaches implement essential oils in their practices? They can become a wholesale customer at any time um, to be able to access the essential oils at wholesale prices. Okay. When somebody is wanting to go onto the business side of things, I help them with that so that we can work out that uh, individual plan of action and we can see the, the best way uh, for them. They could have a little stock of essential oils in their practice that somebody could purchase after an appointment. Um, I, I always try and avoid that though, mm. of, of too much stuff because of the, the outlay of it. Mm. Um, so often the best thing to do would be to say, right, this is a particular oil, give them a sample of that oil mm. that they can then take away with them for a day or two or I like to do it for um, six, six doses at least. Okay. So if it's something, somebody battling with sleep, for instance, mm -hmm. you would give them us, we've got a special blend for sleep and um, you could buy a bottle of that and then, then dispense those samples to that client that they experience it mm -hmm. for that amount of time and they can come back to you. And I know without fail, serenity works wonders and the serenity blend for sleep they'll come back and they say right that worked for me i'll take a bottle please and then they can actually or you can set them up with their own account that they could order it independently you don't want to be managing admin that's not what you do and that's where um it's lovely because you carry on doing what you love to do you're adding the support and opportunity for your clients um but the admin of it can happen independently of you afterwards. So you're not trying to order for a client, then you've got to phone them and say, okay, it's this much money. And then they've got to come and fetch it. And yes. it's so, it's streamlined. And then of course you are getting the benefit of them being within your distribution um, as wholesale customers and um, that just starts to create a residual income for you as it grows. So really, um, it's about having a small little um, stash within your offices, um, even within your therapy. You know, if you see someone really, really distressed, um, you could be diffusing oils in your in your diffuser that support a particular transition or whatever that client is going through at that time, um, and then. Having these oils at bay, if you see someone very distressed or um, starting to hyperventilate or something, that you can actually just bring out an oil and okay, okay, just just smell this oil just yeah. to help them. Um, so that is also another way. So it's practically within the practice during your um, your sessions, mm -hmm. and then after that, um, you are empowering them to. You know what's lovely about it too is that they feel they've got something. Yes. It's something tangible mm. that can be held in their hand that this is a tool and it can help me. Mm. And you see it particularly um, brightly with children. Mm. If they have had an issue like going to school or uh, abandonment issues or anything like that, and you empower them with a little rollerball blend and that's another thing you can do in your practice by the way you can make up rollerballs that you could then resell okay um 
but to see a child and they suddenly create an attachment to that because they know it helps them. Uh, and that's empowering in itself is giving them the confidence to know that there is actually something um, to help them take that fear of another episode happening away. Um, I've got a client as well who's got a young son who's now 13, but since nine was having the most horrendous um, episodes um, passing out and fitting and whatnot. And we, we started with an oil and this boy has shown such a huge results and and he's actually got to the point where he he's embraced them so wholly because he knows okay this is something that if i'm at school and i can feel one of these things coming on mm. i've got my rollerball that i can just smell and it'll yes. stabilize yes, yes. so that that i love because it's, it's empowering for the individual yeah but I definitely think that whenever you do give essential oils uh, to clients that um, uh, little, uh, they need to know how to use it and give them a little card or a little sheet yeah. of paper, just give them clear direction. Absolutely. And I can support with that. If people um, are interested in sampling particular oils, well, they've got some, I've got a whole a whole file database full of all these little tools that um, you know you can add your sample to and it tells them how to use it how often to use it mm. um, you know safety uh, we do oil studies as well every now and again where we will identify a particular oil um, and then offer out to individuals to try it over the six day period mm. they then come onto our uh, dedicated facebook page and then we support them and they share how they've been feeling yes. using these oils yes. uh, and that was a, a huge one for me when we launched our adaptive um it's, it's like the coping blend mm. it came at the right time during our um lockdowns and things but it's it's an uplifting um but calming blend and uh, we did a whole study around that and that could be something that could work very well um, for people involved in this to, to just expose different clients to different ways of using it along a little study route, get some feedback and then explore what worked for them. Because we give them three different oils mm. and then they, they try all three and they come back and they say, okay, for, for sleep related issues, this one worked for me. Yes, yes, now that's very good to know. Um, now, if people want to, uh, you, uh, you start to do essential oils because of your medical history and you study through do doTERRA? Yes, well, you can do certification courses through doTERRA okay. yes. um, on the essential oils. I've done those and I've done the business practice and strategy one. Um, there are those and then there's also this emotional aromatherapy certification that is very very helpful for for counselors and people who are working with the emotions it just it it's a weekly online course um for three months and i think it's two hours a week that you go on and really dig deep and it's normally in a group of about five to eight people um but it's amazing that would be a really lovely stepping stone for someone really wanting to take this and um incorporate it as a, what would one call like a, a protocol aspect within the their business okay all right and a now methodology when, yes when you started your when you start to really get into the business of essential oils did you have any um uh, challenges that you faced that uh, people would convince that essential oils really did what you know Somebody said to me one day that it's like people are selling essential oils like it's a magic potion, and you know, indeed, like they're very there is a, there is a lot of, um, I think, hesitancy sometimes. Um, and there are people that um, might have given it a bad name, or mm. but you know, the whole wellness industry was set to boom, to mm. flourish many years back when I was 
looking at research studies in that in 2005, 2006, I said wellness, wellness is the area to be in. Mm. It is just going to skyrocket higher and higher. And mm. now what Dr. Hare is showing is the same thing. So there's a need out there. Um, and there are a lot of people who maybe share their oils, not so much in a, a fundamental business capacity, but they just want to help people and talk about it. Um, there is a lot of this whole adulteration thing where people are not getting the pure the pure products it's not working um so so they might say oh it's a load you know load of rubbish um and i think also that preconceived idea is that you know that this was this is something that um maybe only the what was the word that that these Americans said? There's a word that they said. It's like all these airy fairy people, you know. Only they do essential oils. Well, um, yeah, that's not the case at all. When you look at the communities that um, are doing amazing things using the oil, so it is just a preconceived idea. I've had a lot of people also like, oh, what? You know, how can that work? But I think when with that whole, the the business aspect of it, and you know. Um, that the business model works. It is extremely generous. And when you compare it to a lot of other business models out there for similar type of products or wellness products, mm. this knocks the socks off all of them. And it allows people the opportunity to grow so much faster. And I love that. But the biggest thing is, um, for me, in terms of why this, um, why I'm so passionate about it and and the future for it as individuals because um you know you want to look and say is this a market i want to get into really is there an opportunity for it mm. um and is the work you do going to be worth it right because you don't want to be going and putting your special time into something that's not going to grow well if you look at the industry norm a statistic called retention rate so say you are finding uh, 10 customers in a month that you're selling your product to whatever industry you're in or, and your growth comes from an existing client base that is going to reorder now the industry norm is that one at one to two people are going to reorder from you in coming months and you look at the way that that grows your business it, it's not fast because you you're kind of working with a leaky bucket yes. um, every month. It's slow and it's hard because you're trying to find those eight more customers that are slipping away every month just to get where you were last month. Mm. With doTERRA, their industry norm is around 70%. So it means seven out of 10 people are going to order again next month. Beautiful. So that makes so that's huge. It makes a huge difference. It means you are getting to that point where it's making a difference financially mm. for your time and your efforts. Mm. Um, and particularly for, for people in your industry, because you are billing out your time. Mm. So what's nice about the Stotera aspect is that something that can add on to your business and just keep going as a residual thing um, to help support that, because you can only get to a point where you are um quoting billing for your time we would all love to be these hyper i don't know like eric war for instance he's a big network marketing guru i think he for an hour long session uh, it's something like six hundred thousand dollars for an hour with him or something you know we'd all love to be able to charge that but uh but it's not real but that's what's nice about this it's something that can grow significantly on the side to contribute then to your income your income absolutely that is uh, extra additional income that is viable um, and it's realistic yes. and it can be done and it I can be done and the support systems of it is what's nice is that you don't have to know everything mm. to do the business it, the the structure everything is there yeah. and then with me on the business side um walking it with you uh is to to help you get the, the benefit of of the different infrastructure you don't have to go and learn all of that yes yeah and I think in your um, in the office of the counselor or a coach, if they can have in their office a place where they actually have the essential oils as yes. a visual component for the clients to see, like, 
oh, okay, you know what? I heard about essential oils. What are these? And they, they could always say, okay, you know what? This is what they do. And I think it might help you in that way. Um, uh, possibly just bring it in. And having a range of those emotional um, rollerballs says yeah. it all because they're called forgive, console, cheer. Yeah. Yes. along the different things there and often a client will just identify with one of those and, and yes. say oh i'm going to try this so that's lovely and it gets conversation going as well if they're not there to talk about no one's going to comment on it but someone might say oh yes i've heard of that mm. i've been wanting to try one yes. uh, another great one is to actually just utilize your diffusers um within your your treatment um or what would you say your sessions Yes. Um, have a diffuser going because so often that leads to huge discussions. So if, you know, in the afternoon when um, maybe your clients are a little bit more lethargic and tired, if they've, they've come from work or, you know, a little bit later in the day, then you could put some peppermint in or some motivate blend, which is a lovely one um, that just kind of gets people a little bit more enlivened. Or if you know that a client is coming who is really feeling sad, you could put something like with your limonene base, so a citrus based oil. Mm. It's always very uplifting. It's a happy oil. Oh, you can pop some of that in. So they're going to get the benefit out of a session. They might not know it's oil necessarily mm. that's assisting them, but they can get more out of it emotionally. Yes. Um, and so often, People will say, what is that? What is that smell? It's so mm. nice. Yes. What is that? It feels so good. And that also opens up the conversation then about what these oils can do for you while you're sleeping. What yes. a beautiful way to yes. help yes. children and, and people who might battle with sleep, or whatever. It's just a gentle way um, through the air. And just remember that with their terror, because we believe in the potency and the purity we don't burn oils yes so a lot of practices will burn we don't burn oils we use these uh water diffusers so through ultrasonic methods it takes those fine little volatile aromatic compounds and it puts them into the air into like mole water molecules so they therefore can purify the air they can be um, taken in aromatically and use for what they are intended. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, no, um, I think through this whole um, COVID um, saga that we are actually still going through, my office started to smell like sanitizer because I had to sanitize after each client. Sure. And it smelled really terrible. You know, eventually I opened the window and I like, flap the door to get some fresh air in here mm -hmm. but then I start to actually use a diffuser and that helped a great deal um, not only to mask the sanitizer spell that was hovering over but also it had those um, additional healing qualities it it not only helped my clients but it helped me as well which absolutely was and a big one that we've all used um throughout when we had personal interactions uh, during lockdown and whatnot was um, a, a blend that we call the protective blend on guard. And um, that has got amazing studies behind it. Um, and it has the most fantastic um, protection against environmental threats. Mm. So it's cleaning the air, it's protecting you, it's supporting your immune system. Um, in the most amazing ways. I mean, there's hospitals in the US, 150 odd hospitals who have been using that blend um, for dealing with all of these funnies that, that emerge. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's empowering in itself is that, you know, while, while you're in a session that, uh, that risk of exposure uh, is minimized as well. That's wonderful. Now, Kim, um, I know that there'll be a lot of people that will be interested in reaching out to you and actually get to study and um, get to know more about essential oils. 
Um, do they do that through doTERRA or can they do these courses through you? They can contact me and then I put them in, in link them in with whatever they are wanting to do. So the best thing is to contact me. Um, you will provide my, my contact details, but I, my business that I work through is called Pure Truth. So I've got a website called Pure Truth Online and um, I'll supply my WhatsApp number as well. I'm very, very happy just to hop on to a Zoom session. I like to serve people for their individual needs um, and just make sure that it's a good fit. And I also believe that when we are dealing one on one, um, you know, there's so much more of a, a win win in terms of where people can identify the opportunities that are there for them. Um, and then it's just a process, you know, we don't like to fast track someone if they're just wanting to embark upon this as a little bit of a wellness journey and empowerment thing themselves and then explore one aspect that might interest them. We support that and we walk with that person. Someone else might come along and say, right, I'm revamping my whole um, consultancy and I'm going to do this and I've got then we run with that person as well so it's very much what people are needing individually and that's where um a whatsapp call or a zoom session or something like this and then i always have my presentations available as well where i can pull things up and show people mm. but we do um all that linking into doTERRA's resources you know once if you're a wholesale customer and you're purchasing the oils mm. and you've got an amazing little back office that empowers you to go and learn. Uh, you get your wholesale prices, you can embark on the loyalty uh, reward system, where you're getting extra benefits, it's like a clicks club card, or whatever, you know, you get points. And you can redeem that for free product, which is wonderful. Um, and then embarking if you're looking at uh, doing the business aspect, there's the opportunity to upgrade to what we call a wellness advocate. And this is where, where, where you become a stewardess of these gifts of the earth, what we call it. Mm. Um, it's about sharing solutions with others in whatever capacity and whatever extreme you would like to do it. Um, and right. the, you actually get a that back office as well, which is like a customer portal. Mm. But being a wellness advocate, suddenly it opens up this um, the business aspect where you can see who's ordered through you, uh, you could log on once a day at the end of your day before you go home. Okay, so and so has ordered some oils, this one's ordered. You can see how your, your monthly overall average is going. Nice tool for you that helps administer that whole business in a little nutshell without you having to go and create it. Okay, and then what's lovely is you also get a personalized website that you can lead your clients to, to learn the basics of the essential oils so it would be uh, like mine is uh, it's a doTERRA site with a slash and either your name or your business name mine is slash pure truth and um, when people go on it's got a standardized introductory page but it's got your your details on it and your name and what you're offering and then people can go and register their health sale account and order their oils from there Okay. So that's okay. lovely too. But it, it so you're not reinventing the wheel, you know. Mm. Yeah. So it's basically you can mold it to fit you. Um, Absolutely. And then you know you don't have to be doing the classes either. If you've got ten clients that you want to learn more about the essential oils, you link them in with me, and I do the classes for them. Um, I don't expect you to do it, and. You know, some people will go, oh, no, I'm, that's not my thing. I don't really like to talk about the oils. I love to talk about the oils. And I love as many people coming onto my classes as possible. And we do that throughout the week. So people just book in and we know uh, when they when they log in, we give them the general, we answer some questions, and then they, we refer them back to you for your um, consolidation and whatnot of what they need. Okay. Oh, no, that is absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. But uh, I know that you're on Facebook, um, and uh, but do you, uh, do you have any other social media platforms that you that people can follow you? 
Or yes, I am on Instagram. I'll provide those details. It's under Pure Truth for You. Um, Pure Truth Essential Oils on Facebook. I've also got a small page. It's really just been through talking healthcare aspects of um, self-love and uh, detoxing and that sort of thing. Um, it's called Smart Sassy Sugarless Lassie. It's for um, we started it because of dieting and um, people always worried about uh, slimming and whatnot. So we wanted to give a holistic approach to that. We do have blends that help with things like, um, you know, the, the it's called the metabolic blend. Okay. Uh, so it was created around that, but it's kind of morphed into just more of a wellness chat. So I don't talk as much solution about the oils as I do on my Pure Truth page, okay. um, but it's a nice holistic wellness page as well, if anyone would like to hop onto that. Okay, wonderful. And you'll supply all those details to me, and then I'll put it in the description yeah. below. Um, Absolutely. And if people could just say, if you are um, going to send me a WhatsApp or something, just say, uh, I watched you through Erna, just so that I know um, what you already know about me, and uh, that it's, it's through Erna, so we can also um, see who we've reached through our conversation today. Okay, wonderful. And I'm sure that we will reach quite a lot of people, I hope. Um, uh, is there any other additional information that you want to share with everybody about essential oils, about the business uh, side of things that we haven't talked about yet? I think really the, the biggest thing for me is um, looking at longevity of time versus reward uh you know this is something it is a journey it is something that i have found to be extremely empowering in terms of my personal development mm -hmm. um and i've learned so much in a leadership role um in aspects that i never anticipated as you grow within this business model you are evolving as an individual as well and um that is hugely empowering and something that not a lot of business models really offer anymore. You know, uh, when you look at the way corporate gobbles people up and spits them out. <laughs> Sorry, corporate people, but yeah. um, you know, we do. We see the, the the shrapnel that comes out of out of those environments. Mm -hmm. That this is just um, such a nice opportunity to learn a little, be involved in a community of like-minded individuals and. If you're looking at something, I encourage you just to start. Don't wait. You know, too much waiting, it just procrastination just kills passion. And when you do something as soon as you can, even if it's not perfectly, mm. it's okay because you're doing it. And um, you know, our our businesses are so much of they're in energy. And if we can maintain that energy by being part of these communities uh, and containers of individuals mm. who've got similar uh, insights, similar beliefs and, and dreams and visions, then we are empowered to, to do more. Um, I was seeking something to give back. I was, getting, I was at a point where I wanted to um, feel a purpose in my life. And, this opportunity gave that to me because when you're involved with something uh, bigger than you, we can appreciate so much more. Mm. And um, yeah, doTERRA is that, uh, their, their whole philosophy, you know, they're privately owned. They got opportunity right at the beginning of this business. They started in 2008 after that big crash, the worldwide economic crash, the worst time to start a business. But they were so full of dreams and vision and faith that they were going to deliver something pure to the market mm. because a lot of them had come from other businesses the way they saw what was going on mm. and uh, they had the opportunity to get partners in they went and spent a day in new york presenting to try and get income to or uh, investment to get this whole thing going and they were offered a lovely amount of money to get this going they all went out and there's a beautiful story and video around it um and maybe i'll put that link mm. uh, i'll put that link onto your your details 
um, is that they were all standing looking at the Statue of Liberty. And they slowly said to one another, we can't take that loan. And the reason behind it was being answerable for an aspect of profit that sometimes uh, in business, when there is that big uh, financial aspect behind it and partners and things, uh, they would have to compromise on purity. And they just said, we can't do that. Yeah. So they rejected that and all went and bonded their homes in a time that was incredibly volatile in the marketplace. And they made huge sacrifices um, because they would not waver mm. on their fundamental dream of delivering something that's pure. So that is my inspiration always is, is keeping that and holding that these individuals have gone all this way down the line and they, they privately held they're debt free and they still manage to do the most amazing things like building hospitals and distilleries and all of those things that we we can actually bless the lives of so many people not just with a drop of oil yeah. but but by going out there and also then creating these lovely communities where we support one another no, but i think as individuals we could also learn from uh, from their story that um yes there will be ups and downs but if you're persistent and if you work towards your dream and keep your dream here for yourself okay. and like they say you know it was never going to be easy mm. they knew that you know it, there is an easier way there would be an easier way yeah. but that that wasn't what they set out to do and it wasn't their dream no. And uh, yeah, that's what stood them and made them the global leader um, and continue to do so, hopefully. Well, no, uh, I'm sure that they're going to, you know, stay around for very, very, very long. They were amazing, you know, through the whole lockdown thing as well in identifying the needs of their consumer and mm -hmm. identifying the needs of humanity and yes. providing um new products even that met the, the emotional needs mm -hmm. of of where we were at and everything so they really do sort of listen and watch and and care yes no, definitely kim i want to thank you so much for being part of this project i really appreciate it all the skills and tips and everything that you shared with us today was remarkable I cannot thank you enough. And I'm sure a lot of people, whether they are counselors or coaches or private people watching uh, this video will definitely be intrigued and will definitely reach out to you because I think we must, you know, it's there's so many, many warning signals on uh, tablets and pharmaceuticals that you get. And after effects, it's scary what can happen. So we must actually learn how to feed our bodies, how to do it more naturally and to do it in such a way that it actually, it doesn't only help the planet, but it helps the inside as well. It helps the heart and it helps the soul. Um, so I definitely think that more, more and more people are going towards the natural route and this product that you were telling us about today is it falls perfect in with that whole um sphere of thing it does and you know it's just um I, I was talking to a group of little boys the other day grade sixes that i went to do a talk about toxins they were they had it as a project week and mm. i thought oh my goodness what am i going to tell these kids you know are they going to identify and so we talked about uh, the body systems and how the different stages in different areas deal with the, the toxins and what oils do what way. And I realized, you know, this is something that a lot of uh, adults, you know, don't really even um, have a lot of knowledge about. It's something we need to talk about is this, this toxic load on our body that is exposed. Um, we do a class on that about toxin free um, or low tox living both um, body, mm. so how we can start to flush out um, all of those things. And, you know, when you've been on medication for a long time, you know, just look at doing little little things that are going to help 
um, realign your body's strengths. Um, and then in our home environments alone, like there's so many opportunities to minimize that toxic exposure when it comes to, um, you know, your carpet cleaner or your laundry softener and all of those things, the impact on our respiratory systems and all of that. And remembering too, that the type of sphere that you're working in, um, particularly on the emotional side of things, um, it will have spun off into that area. When, when our systems are, are not functioning properly, um, you know, the emotions also affect it in a huge way. So it's just it's a lovely, holistic approach. So if you're interested in any topics in particular, um, your community is more than welcome to contact me. We can get them onto a class around it. Uh, we can meet one-on-one -on -one to chat. I'm very, very open. Um, and it's just a really lovely opportunity. Thank you so much, Una. I love chatting to you. Oh. And I love what you've created in this uh, community of individuals that, yeah, you know, now more than ever, we need connection. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. and supporting one another and a sense of community and togetherness because, you know, we, we're more together. Uh, that's always what I tell my team as well. We can do more if we all band together. And there's so much positivity that we can bring to a world that and, and you guys see it um that is crying out for solutions oh. at the moment there's, oh, there's a lot of and we can go and, and smile together oh, thank you so much kim but you have a wonderful yeah. day further and once again from the bottom of my heart thank you so much for everything that was so lovely chatting to you and i thank you and I hope we do it again sometime. Oh, absolutely. Bye. Take it care. Bye. Okay, so that was Kim Clark. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, there's a lot of information about essential oils, and I think she covered so much about it. Um, it is important that you educate yourself regarding essential oils. Um, there is one thing, though. Uh, I did mention earlier that I do put a diffuser in my office and that it actually helps with the scent um, of the sanitizer that I always had in my office. But there is something that I want to uh, just let you know, have a look at the different recipes that's available out there. Make sure that it is for what you need to accomplish. As Kim mentioned, lime, lemon, citrus is very good. I feel it is very, I don't know, it, those type of oils are just a happy feel. And it makes you feel energized. It makes you feel fresh. That and pep peppermint is, and mint is very, very good for actually energizing and uplifting the mood. Um, I am going to give you a short little recipe for um, when that you can tell clients that they can use in their own diffusers. Um, you can use three drops of lavender, three drops of lime, and one drop of spearmint. Okay, so there's three drops of lavender, three drops of mint. Oh, listen to me now, sorry. Three drops of lavender, three drops of lime, and one drop of spearmint. And that is, that will help reduce stress. Or remember, it does go hand in hand with breathing exercise and all the other tools that you are giving to your clients while they're in session. These diffusion and these essential oil blends, that doesn't replace Therapy. It doesn't replace the tools that you want to share with your clients. It is only a support. It helps the clients along the journey, especially in the times that they're not with you. And um, this will just help them align them again, bring them back down to where they want to be. I look forward to seeing you all again. And once again, please share this video, please share all the videos like and subscribe and remember to go get your book speak to you soon bye